All right, so in this final section of chapter one, we're just going to quickly review the Cartesian plane. You know, how do you plot points in the plane? What are the quadrants? That sort of thing. And then we're going to recall two important analytic geometry results, namely how you find the distance between two points in a plane and how you find the midpoint of a line segment. And then we're going to use those to find the equation or the equation for a circle in the plane and then how to find that depending on what information you have. All right, so let's first look at it. The Cartesian plane, basically the XY plane, is comprised of two copies of the real line intersecting at 90 degrees. Right, and so if you take the real line as the x-axis, the real line as the y-axis and intersect them, the common point of intersection is the origin. And if you want to, if you want to plot a point in the plane, the first coordinate is the x, the second coordinate is the y. And so in terms of quadrants, we're assuming that moving along to the right in the x direction or up in the y direction is the positive direction. And so points in the first quadrant, we'll say, this first upper box, both have an x and a y that are positive. Whereas over here, moving to the left along the x-axis gives you a negative, moving along the upward direction of the y gives you a positive. And so in the second quadrant, points have a negative x and a positive y. And then similarly, in the third quadrant here, both coordinates are negative. And in the fourth quadrant, the x is positive while the the y is negative. All right, this is called an ordered pair because the ordering actually is important, right? The, the first one is x, the second one is y. You can't just flip them around and expect to get the same point back. All right, so for instance, here, go ahead on a, on a xy plane, go ahead and try plotting these five points and see what you get. All right, so if you do that, here are the results. For one is in the first quadrant, x is 4 and y is 1, and so you go over to the right for enough 1 to get a. For b, both are negative. You go negative 1 in the x and negative 2 in the y to get that positioning. For c, notice that the x coordinate is 0, so you never moved away from the y axis. So you just go from the origin straight down to minus 3, right? So that is a y intercept, so to speak. That'll be a term that we talk about next time. Um, 5, negative 1 occurs in the fourth quadrant, move 5 to the right and 1 down. And then 3, 0 is a similar idea to C. You never leave the x-axis and just move 3 over to the right. All right, so let's look at distance, right? We already know how to compute distance along the real line. We introduced the absolute value to do that. But now, if we're in the xy plane, now position requires two pieces of information, an x and a y, like I have shown here, right? So I have a point, we'll call it x1, y1. The ones here are just indices. They're subscripts that indicate just a label, that's all it is. You could very easily just call them a, b if you wanted to. And then I have another point, q, we'll call it x sub 2, y sub 2, right? And suppose I want to know what the distance between p and q is, right? And I'm labeling that as d, parentheses p comma q, that's, an, that's a common way of denoting distance between two points. All right, well, I don't know how to compute that right off the bat because it moved both in the x and the y direction, right? And so I don't know how to compute that using what we know. But what you can do is form a right triangle by keeping this height always at y1 and this x coordinate always as x2. Right, so if I look at the point R with x coordinate x2 and y coordinate y1, notice that QR, that segment here, is vertical because I never change the x coordinate. Right, the only thing that's changing here is the y coordinate. And similarly here, the segment PR, well, that's horizontal because I never change the y. It's always y1. And you say, well, so what? Well, two things are important. One, I know that I formed a right triangle, right? So if I can manage to find the lengths of these sides, that old Pythagorean theorem that you learned about will, will kick in and we'll be able to use it to express the length of this side in terms of that. Well, the question is, well, how do I compute the lengths of these sides? And that was where step two or the, the second reason why we did this comes into play. This is basically a copy of the real line. If you want its length, right between those two points, 
all I have to do is subtract the y coordinates and take their absolute value, right? The reason I take the absolute value is that these are just labels. And so it could very well have been that y1 was higher than y2, I don't know. Depends on my picture. Um, but in any case, the length of this side is the absolute value of y1 minus y2. And same way here, the length of this side, the only thing that's changing is the x's. So I just take x1 minus x2 in absolute values to find its length. Okay. You could also subtract it in the opposite order, it doesn't matter. Okay, well then I had the length of each of those sides. By the Pythagorean theorem, if I square the length of this side and square the length of this side and add those, I should get the length of that guy squared. All right, that's what I have here. To get the actual length, I have to get rid of this square. And so what I'll do is I'll take the square root of both sides, right? And that gives me this formula. So the distance between two points is the square root of the sums of the squares of the differences between the x and y coordinates of those points. Think of it verbally like that. All right, so let's go ahead and look at example one. If I want the distance between those two points, all I have to do is subtract the x values, so 4 minus 1, square it, and then add to that, subtract the y coordinates, that's minus 1 minus 3, square it, right? So let's compute the inside. I have three squared and negative four squared. That gives me nine plus 16, which is 25. Take the square root of that end result to get that the, the distance between those two points is five units. All right, so you go ahead and try these two, right? Exactly the same thing, just be careful with negative signs when you're subtracting. That's the only thing that you really have to be worried about. And remember, you're subtracting the x's and the y's of each of those points. All right, so if you do that, again, the setup is the same. I'm subtracting the x values. So I want minus two minus a negative one. So I have a double negative here. All right, so that turns into minus two plus one, which is minus one. And then here I have minus three minus four, no double negative. So if I simplify this, I get negative seven. Square both of those, you get one plus 49, which is radical 50. And yes, technically you can simplify that using the results we talked about earlier. That's just five root two. Similarly here, when you have zeros, it's even easier yet, right? If I subtract zero, I don't change the value. And so I'm just getting minus four squared here and positive four squared there. Both those give you a 16, which then when you add them gives you 32. And that, if you simplify, gives you four root two. All right, so distance formula, not too bad. Now, how about the midpoint? All right, so let's look at a picture. I give you the same old two points. And suppose I want to find the point that is smack dab in the middle of those two points. Okay. Well, the question is, well, how do I do that? Well, the only way you're going to be in the middle of those two points is if you went halfway from x1 to x2 and you went halfway from y1 to y2. In other words, if you went any more than halfway from x1 to x2, you're going to be further along horizontally on this segment, so it wouldn't be the midpoint. Same way here, if you didn't go exactly halfway between y1 and y2, you'd be higher up. And so we know that we have to find the middle points of each of these two segments, and then you have to use both of those to get the midpoint of the diagonal segment. Okay, well, to find the midpoint of this segment, all you have to do is find the average, right? That's, the, that's what you would do to find a midpoint. So the average of x1 and x2 is the sum divided by two. The average of y1 and y2 is the sum of y1 and y2 over two. Right? And so the midpoint has coordinates x1 plus x2 over two. So the average of the x's and the average of the y's. All right, and so let's find, here's the example. This is the same example we did before, but now with the same points, but now we're asking for the midpoint. So if I want the midpoint between these two points, I'm gonna add the x's, four plus one divided by two. I'm gonna add the y's, minus one plus three over two, and simplify to get five halves comma one. So this is the point that is right directly in the middle of 
the point, the line segment with these two endpoints. Just bear in mind, you know, the oftentimes when people have the midpoint formula and the distance formula together, the tendency is to mix up which one you're subtracting in and which one you're adding in, right? So it often helps to think about the picture in this case, just to kind of remind yourself um, which one's which. All right, for the your turn, it's the same points you looked at in the previous one. Go ahead and apply that midpoint formula to find the midpoint of each of these segments. If you do that, just check yourself that you got these coordinates back. Again, the only thing you have to be careful of is the negatives and that you're actually adding the x and the y's each time, not subtracting them. All right, I'm gonna let you read example three, but suffice it to say that if you have a distance formula, now you can find the perimeter of any sort of region that's comprised of line segments in the xy plane, right? So perimeter is the distance around Right? So that's a common thing that you add, that we ask you to do in the calculus and word problems. Right? And so to find the perimeter of a, of a triangle, all you have to do is find the length of each of those three sides. But the minute you have the coordinates of those three points, which we have, you can use the distance formula to find the lengths of each of those segments and then add them up to find the perimeter. Okay, so I'll let you read through that, but this is the calculations behind doing that. Okay, and now finally, we want to talk about circles, right? And what you already know about a circle is that basically there's a center, and the way you get on the circle is by being the same exact distance from the center, right? So you have a radius that tells you that distance, right? So we have a point here and a radius, and the way a point x, y gets on the circle is by being that distance away from the center. Right, and so all these points are there because they're a fixed unit or fixed distance away from HK. <clears throat> but that tells you right there, just the description alone tells you how to find the equation of a circle, right? You're gonna use the distance formula. We, we know that X, Y is on the circle if it's distance from HK, which is the left side, right? We have two points. Use the distance formula to find the distance between those two points. If that distance is this radius r, so is means equals, right? So if that distance equals r, then x, y is on the actual circle. Well, now what people typically do is from here, they square both sides because people don't want to deal with radicals. And so what we'll say is that the standard equation of a circle centered at hk with that radius is equal to the radicand, it's that squared plus that squared equals r squared. Keep in mind here that these negatives are part of the formula. You can't ignore those, right? They're, they have to be there, okay? All right, so, so let's actually look at this example. So first, I want to find the equation of the circle with center three minus two and radius five. So all I'm gonna do, we know the center is HK in this formula. I'm gonna plug in three for H minus two for K and I'm gonna plug in five for R, right? That's the very first thing that I do right here. Notice right there, I have parentheses around the minus two, right? Because the minus here has to be brought down as part of the formula. And so what I'm gonna get in this particular part is Y plus two, right? Not Y minus two, Y plus two. This guy is X minus three because it was positive to begin with. And so you have just X minus a positive three. If you square five, you get 25. All right, so this is the standard equation for that particular circle. Okay, and then for here, I give you the equation of a circle and I want you to find the center and radius. So the idea is to then be able to first write this in this form, right? So, and that means the negatives too. So when I have X plus five squared, I wanna write that as quantity X minus something squared and same way here, I want to rewrite y squared as y minus something quantity squared. And I need to write the right-hand side as something squared, right? Because this is r squared. So to do that, notice that x plus 5 squared is just x minus a negative 5 squared. So the double negative produces that plus. You're not subtracting anything from y to begin with, 
So subtracting zero does you exactly the same thing. And then now we know that the number squared that gives you two has to be root two by definition. So you've written that equation in this form. I can now pluck out what the coordinates are. The x coordinate of the center is minus five, the y is zero, and the radius is root two. All right. Again, try this your turn, see what happens. Just be careful with the negative signs. Okay. And I'll put the solution up here momentarily. Okay, so for the first one, I'm gonna put in minus six and minus two and for H and K respectively in the formula. And I'm gonna square the 16, because the right-hand side of the standard equation of a circle is the radius squared, it's not just the radius. All right, so I get X minus a negative six squared, that's x plus six squared. Same for this term. And if you square 16, you get 256. To find the center of this equation, I'm gonna rewrite each of those as x minus zero and y minus zero squared each time. And then I'm going to rewrite the right-hand side as radical three squared. The center is at the origin and the radius is root three. Okay, finally, let's look at this. Suppose I want to find the equation of a circle that has the points minus six, seven, and four minus one as endpoints of the diameter. Okay, so if I want to do that, right, I know that a diameter has to pass through the center of a circle. That's by definition from high school geometry. And so that actually tells you a lot. We know that these two points are endpoints of the diameter, and so the midpoint of that segment has to be the center of the circle because each of these points being on the circle has to be the same distance from the center. The only way that's gonna happen is if the center lives half, exactly halfway between them. So that's great. We know how to find the midpoint. Just use the midpoint formula with those two points. Similarly, I need to find the radius, but the radius is equal to the length of the, the segment from zero to one of those points. Well, I have these two points. All I have to do is find the distance of the whole thing or the length of this whole thing and then take half of it, right? So if I use the distance formula and take half of it, that'll give me the radius. All right, and so here is the work done for that. I have the midpoint formula here Add the x's, divide by two, add the y's, divide by two, simplify to get that guy. And then for the distance formula, I'm gonna subtract the x values. Or I guess instead of what I did here, you could do this one of two ways. What I could have done, what I was talking about doing is finding the length of the whole diameter and taking half of it. But technically, if you have the center, you can get the radius directly by using the coordinates of the center which is minus one, three, and one of the points, let's say four, negative one, right? That distance would equal the center. You don't even have to divide it by two. So if you do that, apply the distance formula in that case, you do get radical 41. And then if you plug them into the formula, negative one in for H, positive three in for K, and then radical 41 for R, you get the standard equation of that circle is that equation. All right, so as usual, just go ahead and try these problems out. This is the video supplement list is there if you need it, and just see kind of what happens. Let me know.